What's up guys, this is it. This is finally it. It's hard to believe that within 24 hours, Apple will be unveiling their 10th anniversary edition iPhone. For the last 10 years, their cumulative efforts have built up to this one moment where they're gonna announce one of the best products they've made in a very long time. And it's hard to believe it is finally here. But in this video, let's talk about the last few key details. Some specs have leaked, some very interesting things that I wanted to wrap up in this one final video uh, before the keynotes. It's it's so exciting, guys. It's hard for me to even make this video because I'm just so giddy. But anyways, let's get into that and uh, talk about those last things. So first off, the RAM specs have leaked for the official iPhone X8 and 8 Plus devices. Steve TS has dug further in the iOS 11 GM code and has come up with a number. So for the iPhone X, it's three gigabytes. May sound a little disappointing when all these Android phones are coming out with six, eight gigabytes. You would think it would need more, but no, I'm just gonna say it like I've always said, Apple optimization, the amount of speed, the amount of performance you can get out of such low numbers in comparison seemingly is incredible. So I'm not even worried. It's the processor that'll make up for everything. Three gigabytes will be just fine for the iPhone X. The iPhone 8 Plus will be getting three gigabytes as well. The iPhone 8 base model will Will only be getting two so same as the current iphone 7 and 7 plus lineup so not too worried about that but three gigabytes should be sufficient in 2017 for the iphone x now digging further into that code steve ts actually discovered details on apple's 811 chip the 10 nanometer chip first one of that size in an iphone and he has found that it's going to be a six core processor that is absolutely nuts right now we have a four core on the iphone 7 and 7 plus and this one will have a six so four of those are going to handle the smaller you know low end and tasks, stuff like mail, just casual browsing, stuff you don't really need intensive tasks for in order to get more battery life out of the phone. And the two other cores will be handling the high-end stuff. So those are called monsoon cores before smaller ones are called mistral cores. Now a separate developer has says that one of those mistral cores, the low-end cores, is the same as a current core on the Snapdragon 835. That is nuts. That gives you so much perspective on how this thing is going to absolutely blow away the competition as if it doesn't already. That's that's amazing. I love that Apple got into the CPU game and they're just, they're taking names, man. That is amazing. All right, so we've got the A11 chip with six cores. Now, how will the actual benchmark be? Now, the developer himself actually said, if you were to take a guess, if you were a gambling man, he would say that it would start at about 4,100 single core score and 10,000 plus multi-core score. Some of the, you know, low end computers that Apple sells have those scores right now. That is amazing, wow. iPhone is going to be one of the most powerful phones Phones, if not the most powerful phone on the market period. And I cannot wait to see that tomorrow. And the camera specs have been leaked or discovered within this code as well. So Steve TS says the rear cameras on the iPhone 8 or X model, the vertical lens cameras will be 12 megapixel. That's still the same as the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and the camera before it's in the iPhone 6S, but that's not to say they won't have other improvements. You know, Apple doesn't really blow up the picture larger than that because that seems to be sufficient for most tasks for the quality that you need. But looking forward, in 2018, they're actually going to go further. A recent rumor said 16 megapixel is what they are aiming at, but for now, we're gonna stay at 12 for another year. And that's pretty fair. The bigger a number is doesn't necessarily mean the quality is better as well. The front-facing camera will also remain at seven megapixels, and it will still only record 1080p at 30 frames per second. That one is a little disappointing when most competitors are already doing QHD. And he says the rear camera will, of course, do 4K at 60 frames per second and slow motion 1080 at 240, which is a very impressive spec. And I found this interesting. So Mark Gurman actually spoke about the naming of the iPhone 8 and he says it will be referred to as the iPhone 10. The X will represent most likely a 10, which could confuse things with the naming scheme, but I'm sure Apple will clarify that next year. He also says that it's in a direct reference to the original iPhone. So this will be its successor 10 years down the road and they're going to be very proud of that as they're actually using an old globe wallpaper, not old, but very similar one reminiscent of the original one and listen to the video. There's been a lot of people talking about that there's no way that Apple would ever come out with a phone to acknowledge the most important product in the world's 10th anniversary, but that's what they were going to do. In fact, the default wallpaper on this phone is the same as huh. the default globe wallpaper on the first phone. So <laughs> I think it's going to be 10 in the end. Mark, you're such a geek. I love it. Mark Gurman, no, big no, consumer not. technology <laughs> and Apple's product reporter. So that's cool that Apple is doing that reference. Very excited to see how they're going to sell it to us and do the whole 
retro throwback. I'm really looking forward to that tomorrow. Now, Ming-Chi Kuo went and released a new report again just last night, talking about the supply constraint of the iPhone X models. So he said that the production rate right now is under 10,000 units per day, and that is very slow for a device like this. He says it's the difficult manufacturing process that's keeping it low, the supply constraints in general, the reason why it's going to be so hard to get one at launch. Not only will it be so hard to get one in general, it'll be near impossible to get a blush gold color. So if you wanted to get these at launch, very likely that is not going to be happening as they seem to have a very difficult time reproducing this color for whatever reason. So just like every year before it, the new color is going to be sold out almost immediately first and uh, going to be a markup like crazy on these. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to get one if you wanted one right away. You'll have to wait. And more details found within the code by the developer Rambo. He discovered that after you add a face using the new setup process, which by the way, I covered in the last video, kind of cool. This is totally Apple style here, very similar to Touch ID, very friendly. But once you add one face already, you can add another. So this might suggest that multiple users will be supported, some sort of guest mode maybe as well. Apple really is holding back on the software stuff. And I really hope they are. I hope there's a lot of features that we don't even know about that are going to be coming specifically with the iPhone X model after it's released. You know, after the GM dropped, there's a lot of stuff in there that they didn't have in beta 10. So that's something I'm really looking forward to discovering, looking through that firmware on the iPhone, seeing what's really new, because I'm hoping there will be a dark mode in there, a guest mode, and you know, a lot of other stuff as well. And one of the most unfortunate, saddest things I will mention is that ProMotion, one of the coolest things about my iPad Pro, the 120 hertz display, it makes everything feel like liquid butter, just pure butter on your phone, buttering it all away. It may not be happening on the iPhone X. As unfortunate as that is, it may be an upgrade in next year's iPhone. Even though the Wall Street Journal, I believe Bloomberg did confirm it might be happening. Man, that just sucks. So Steve TS, the developer, was bleeding from the eyes after trying to find reference to this feature within the iOS 11 GM firmware, and he could not. So in the same place on the iPad Pro, T-C-O-N, T-Con, he says that area, that section was not found in the iPhone X firmware section. So I don't know too much about that, but when he says that he couldn't find it, no matter how hard he tried, that probably means it will not be happening. And I'm sure there's a slight chance Apple could sneak it in into this keynote. It would be a pretty big deal for the iPhone as it would really set it apart from all the, all the other phones. No matter how good Samsung's smartphone display is, the colors, the vibrance, the sharpness, once you feel something so natural, 120 hertz on your smartphone, on your iPad, you don't want to go back to that personally. Like I I'll admit Samsung's displays are better, but ProMotion makes it that much better. And kind of cool, so 9to5Mac actually found reference in the code that Apple will be having some sort of software burn-in mitigation programming in the iOS 11 code. So because it's an organic LED display, they are going to admit its faults, that burn-in is still a realistic possibility, even though we're like seven or eight generations in using Samsung panels in the organic LED display game. So they're gonna have some sort of mitigation software that could shift pixels that could shift images on the screen when it remains static for too long, which is definitely good. It would address a lot of people's concerns over the one one of the worst flaws in an organic LED display, which is burn in. You know, if you've had an old Samsung phone, I remember you would have like the status bar, the home button area, uh, the buttons down below, they would just stick on the display even when it would go to a pure white screen and be kind of purplish, hazy-ish. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it's definitely a valid concern and Apple is making steps to address it. An actual sticker leak from the packaging of the iPhone 8 via slash leaks. I find this one highly improbable as the color space gray has been phased out since the iPhone 6s. It's very unlikely this is legitimate, but apparently that could have some sort of legitimacy to it. It was rumored that the iPhone 8 and 8 plus models would share the same colors as the iPhone X. So that means the blush gold, a black and a silver color. And here's something I definitely didn't think I would ever be talking about again on this channel, the iPod Touch series. The iPod Touch seventh generation has directly been referenced referenced by the iOS 11 Gold Master Edition. Not only that, it makes some sort of reference to Face ID as well. So it could be a possibility, a very slim one, that Apple still has an iPod Touch in the works and they could stick that Face ID sensor into it from the iPhone X. Although Vania says that's just some sort of future proofing and not likely to happen. Either way, very interesting. The iPod Touch may not be dead and we could even hear about it tomorrow, maybe. Now I wanted to address this. How did it happen? How did the iOS 11 Gold Master leak happen? Where 
where the HomePod firmware leak just happened a few weeks ago, and that was awful for Apple. Took so much steam off of their keynote, which is going to be happening tomorrow. How did this one happen so soon after? And John Gruber says that he is almost certain, entirely certain, that a disgruntled employee from Apple intentionally leaked the URLs to a news media. And then it was independently confirmed by BBC that that was the case. The URLs were sent out to the media, to several media sources. So someone within the company is fired. They definitely know that. And uh, they took all those links and just shared them for whatever reason. Very interesting. Um, even Apple can't stop the leaks from inside of their own company at certain times. Either way, like I said in my last video, it's how they present this to us that's gonna make it interesting. I mean, we know a lot about it, but still that doesn't mean it can't be interesting in how they tell it. Anyways, guys, one last thing I wanted to mention was the Mi Mix 2. So today, Xiaomi did announce that phone. I was excited about it. They did it right the day before the iPhone X event, and I uh, can't say I'm that too impressed. It's a little bit of a disappointing release compared to the original, because uh, even though it is improving in the screen to body ratio, it doesn't look as impressive for some reason. In all of the screen renders from the uh, actual press images, it looks so much better than it does in real life it just doesn't look as impressive i don't know let me know what you guys think about that but stay tuned guys the day is tomorrow so exciting wow i will uh, i'll be here to cover all of that guys peace